So today we're going to try three different price points of Texas tea and see, does price point matter? When it comes to something like this. <laughs> So over the past four weeks, we've done dive bar cocktails and did low to medium to high end price point liquors and see, did it matter? Yep. So we figured we'd do a bonus episode. Yes. Do a roundup of a Texas tea that we have not ever done before on this channel. Cool. It's a cocktail I enjoy. Have you yes. ever had it? Yes, I have the hands. Yep, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Larceny bourbon in all of them because yes. you cannot buy, Members Mark does not make a bourbon. Correct. So that's gonna be the consistent, the triple sec is gonna be the consistent. Everything else, if you go check out our previous episodes, you'll find out the taste notes of all of these. We're, gonna go, we're just gonna go ahead and skip right to the drink. Yes, because I don't want to taste all of them nope. again. <laughs> Riley's gonna try to tell the difference between cheap, mid, and high end and see does it matter when we make a Texas tea? All right, so we have three different price point Texas teas, and let's go over the prices real quick. So for the members, Mark, it's $1.43. Total. Total, that's including the bourbon and the triple sec that Perfect. we use. Yes. For the mid-range, we have $2, and for the high, we have $3.40. In theory, they're not too bad different in price points, but when you go to a bar restaurant, that amplifies really quickly. So the high end would be almost like an $18 Long Island iced tea. Right, because there's usually, what, a 400% markup? Uh, five to 600 in bars. There's a big markup. Big difference. But at home, does it matter? At home, obviously, it's a lot cheaper to drink. Yes. So go ahead and let's choose one and let's get going with this I Texas will start tea. with the blue. I do shake my Long Island iced teas because I do like that shake aeration and lightness to it. I don't like that one. Yeah. I don't like it. It's not good. <laughs> Everything muddled together doesn't taste right, just doesn't go well together. Yeah. There's obviously gonna be a point of, you know, are these the four right to go or the fit right. five to go well? Obviously, probably not, because a lot of- I feel of like these five would probably, or these four would probably be fine. I feel like these five taste similar enough by themselves. Right. It's probably fine. This is kind of like the wild bunch. Yeah. <laughs> so you gotta keep that in mind too. Like yes. using, especially when you go to the higher end spirits, picking the right. Right. I mean, we could do a half a year picking the <laughs> episode for right Long Island. That's much better. Still okay. don't like it that much. I think the tequila's coming out too strong in that one. I kinda like that one. I mean, it's fine. I mean, it is two and a half, no. Three ounces of alcohol. Yeah, but like I said, I think the tequila's coming out too yeah. strong in this bed okay. boy. I think that's the best one. Okay. I think all of the flavors go the best together with that one. Oh, I like that. And I feel like there's no real formula for a Long Island varietal. I feel like it's you're, you're throwing you everything into the kitchen sink. Right. I do. You are right. I think this is the best one. Everything just marries very well together. Yes. Like you can kind of taste all the different spirits. Mm -hmm. And it blends very well together. Yeah, that one. Ugh. That's my least favorite. It's, yeah. We're, and these are very far apart. Yes. Yeah, this is, I think this is by far my favorite. So here's what I think. Okay. I think yellow straw is the member's mark. Because like I said, all of these have the same, like they all have kind of that creamy follow. They're all high boozy, not a whole lot of other flavor. So combined, the bourbon is going to shine and the lime is, or the lemon is going to shine. Sure. <laughs> the Terramana, I feel like, is what's making the tequila too prominent. Okay. I feel like Don Julio is more citrusy and bright. 
So it's going to lend itself better to Texas Sea or Long Island than Terramana wood, which right. is sweet and very robust and round. Okay. I feel like this one, the high-end one, because of the flavor varieties, the difference, and I picked these two based on what I feel like is the discerning factor. Sure, to make sure we're all clear, low end, high end, medium. Correct. Okay, you good to go? Yep. At zero right. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> wait, 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 let me try again. Let me try again. Okay. That is the correct order. Okay. You almost had, you almost went Zero for six. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's gonna pick the other combination to get zero for six. I guess this makes more sense of why this works well together, right? Because in theory, right, we like Terramana, we like Beef Eater. We're used to all these We're flavors. We're used to all these flavors, so they yeah. just kind of mesh well. And, and they, they're commonly used. And they're commonly used. So it's like it's like the Long Island we're used to. And so we don't, we don't know what like the behind the curtains of these are, right? We don't know right. what rum this is, what gin that is, and right. stuff like that. So I feel like if I had to create an explanation as to why this one was my least favorite, mm -hmm. I'm going to probably say it's the same reason that I liked the Tom Collins the most from this brand, because the gin is very flavorful. I bet for this one. Is 100% of the gin throwing everything throwing off, off balance. and off. Yep, I, that's my guess. That I don't makes think sense. it's I don't think it's the rum. Uh, you know, the vodka again. Maybe that's throwing some like crazy little curveball behind it. But I can see how it'd be the gin. On this one, it matters. It matters. In some restaurants, these are your wells. Yep. So if you order this, this is what you might get. Is in this price point range, you're gonna pay 10 bucks for it. But again, it's three ounces of alcohol. Can't really bitch about paying 10 to 12 dollars for three right. ounces of alcohol. I like this cocktail. I think if you kind of like tweak different spirits to work with what yeah. mesh well, I think you can make a really good Texas tea. Yeah, I feel like in order to make this, the bourbon needs to stand out. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. And then all of the other spirits need to kind of be, take a back seat. Right. So like a, yeah. the beef eater, because it is the most subtle of the London mm -hmm. dry gins, would be good for it. Yeah. The Bacardi, because it is the most subtle of white rums that right. we have tasted. Yeah. It may be Larsen's not the right, I would I, I would have used Bullet, but we don't have Bullet right now, we're yeah. out, and so we just have a plethora yes. of Larceny. Larceny is a good bourbon. I yes. Just, I think with all these complicated flavors. A higher flavors, rye profile might have been helpful. Yeah, so it, I think it should, this is a fun one to try and have. Go ahead and check out our four previous episodes of Dive Bar Month. It yep. was a fun month to have. Yes. And I'm glad we did this little bonus episode because it kind of combines them all together. Yep. And kind of rips them all apart at the same time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Price kind of does matter on certain things, right? And then on other things. It doesn't. It really like the doesn't. Moscow Mule. Who gives a shit what kind of vodka you use? Don't drink vodka, drink gin. <laughs> so anyways, go check out all four of those episodes. We'll have a playlist link below. You can check those out. Give the Texas tea a try, I think. I think you might like it. Cheers. Cheers.